what is going on guys welcome back to another video and a brand new series of upcoming videos on GANs uh, so the images that you see in front of you are all fake uh, every single one of these images have been generated by a GAN honestly that makes me a little bit sad GANs is the most exciting idea in the last 10 years in machine learning by Jan LeCun. So in this video, we want to see why GANs are awesome, first of all, and then secondly, we want to understand how GANs work and uh, get an under, a general understanding uh, that we can then build on in future videos uh, when we actually implement these things. And I've already shown you this example where they seamlessly transform between uh, different people. And this is incredibly impressive because it means that the model has learned some inherent structure uh, of the data. Another cool thing is that they can do something like this where they have a source A and a source B and they can sort of get the results of combining uh, those two images. And that's also a really, really cool uh, thing. Another application of GAN is, uh, is something called Super Resolution GAN or SR GAN. So what they do here is that they take a lower resolution image and then they upscale it using, using GANs. And here we can see an example of 135p to 540p. And we can really see just a, you know, a, a huge difference. And of course, this is not limited to just having such lo low scale uh, images like 135p. Uh, you can have 1080p and then you can transform it into uh, or upscale it rather to 4k um, 4k resolution uh, one thing that has gotten a lot of hype since the latest nvidia launch uh, just a couple of weeks ago is dlss2 which stands for deep learning super sampling uh, which essentially upscales the game into uh, 4k with equal or you know even better um, quality uh, but with much better uh, frames per second as you can see here, 71 compared to 29. And uh, so I could be wrong here uh, since they haven't shared, you know, details of their architecture or implementation, but I would not be surprised if this was also, uh, you know, heavily built on GANs. Another cool application is uh, what this guy is doing, Denis Shuryev, Sh Denis Shuryev, uh, Denis Shuryev, I think that's how you pronounce it. I'm not sure how you pronounce it actually. But uh, what, what he does, is that he takes old footage from sort of early 1900s or late 1800s and as you can see you know the quality is really poor and then he uh, improves the quality upscales it uh, he makes uh, you know increased uh, video fps and then also makes it colored so as you can see when you see them side by side there's a huge difference uh, in those two especially here when you can see as they move into the frame uh, the, uh, sort of the FPS increases a lot. And so how that would look like uh, is something like this, where this is from San Francisco in 1906. Another very cool application is uh, using something called Cyclogan and pix to pix where they can sort of, uh, here they can take images of zebras and transform them into horses. So essentially they can, they can transform across domains. And this is the same thing as they take an image of, of summer and they convert it into uh, winter. Um, other cool things is that they can take sort of a semantic map of, uh, in this case, a road with cars in it, and they can output a, a realistic image of that semantic map. But GANs are also used in data augmentation, uh, which is a pretty clear um, application. But what might not be so clear is in medical applications, since the data from GANs don't come from a real person, it means that it can be used uh, without the ethical and privacy concerns and, and limitations, which is a really cool application. Uh, another use case is semi-supervised learning, uh, where we can use GANs to efficiently uh, or more efficiently use uh, unlabeled data. And what I've shown you now is really just a small list of examples. Uh, there are many, many more. Uh, and new applications being discovered every day because it's such an exciting and, and new field in many ways. But now I want to move on to look at the idea uh, behind GANs. So first of all, it might be a good place to start. What, what are GANs? 
GANs are a class of machine learning techniques that consist of two networks uh, playing an adversarial game against each other. So one of these networks is called the generator, and we can view the generator as a sort of counterfeeder. Then the other network is the discriminator, uh, and you can view this network as a sort of detective. To give an example of the game that they can play, let's say that the generator wants to print uh, fake money and the discriminator wants to be able to distinguish between fake and real money. And so in the training process of GANs, the generator is trying to print a, a let's say, a $100 bill, but all he come up, comes up with in the beginning is something that looks like at the bottom left of the, of the slide, uh, just some random noise, uh, because it's very bad initially. And so the detective is going to look at these two comparisons of a real $100 bill, and then it's going to look at the random noise, and so in this case, um, you know, it's going to say that the one coming from the generator is fake. And so uh, the generator was not able to fool the discriminator in this case or the detective or uh, the detective. But as training goes on, the generator becomes better and better. And it, now he might produce something that looks like this, where we have close to a hundred real hundred dollar bill. But as we can see, there are some um, Chinese signs on it and other incorrect things. So the discriminator, you know, might look at those two and say, again, that the top one is, is fake, the one coming from the generator. So again, the generator was not able to fool uh, the discriminator. As training goes on even further, the generator might output something that looks like this. So the, the discriminator uh, might go something like this. And then output that the bottom one is fake, which is actually the real a hundred dollar bill. So in this case, the generator was actually able to fool the discriminator. So a question then is why does this uh, work? In the end, uh, the degenerator will be able to generate dollar bills that are indistinguishable from real ones. And the discriminator is uh, forced to guess, you know, with a probability of 0.5, which of those is real and which is uh, fake. Just a note here, uh, both the discriminator and the generator actually start from, from scratch, meaning they are both randomly initialized at start and then simultaneously trained. So I think it's pretty clear that we have a network for the generator and we have another network for the discriminator. And uh, we're going to see how to implement that in, in future videos. But I think the, one of the most important parts to understand right now is what the loss function looks like and, and how it works. So for the, looking at the discriminator, uh, discriminator's loss function, it's going to look something like this, where we have a D as the discriminator. We have XI here is um, a training example I, so a real $100 bill. And then we have, again, the discriminator. We have a generator. And then ZI here is some random noise that is going to be input to the generator. Uh, and at the beginning here, we have just an average across all training examples m. And so let's look at some li little bit more detail. Uh, we take the log of d of xi. And of course, xi here is real. So we want the discriminator to output 1 here. And so if we look at the log of 1, that's going to be equal to 0. And the other term here, we have log of 1 minus d of g of z. And so the generator uh, is going to take in some random noise. It's going to output something that looks close to our real $100 bill. And the discriminator is going to be, you know, output uh, zero or one. And from the discriminator's point of view, we want uh, to output zero here. And again, we were going to then output, uh, we're going to get rather log of one, which is going to be zero. And if, if instead the discriminator is, is fooled by the generator and outputs uh, zero for this term here, then we're going to have log of something close to zero. So the question here is, does the discriminator want to maximize or minimize this loss? And the correct answer here is that the discriminator wants to maximize this expression. So let's look at the point of the, of the generator, and we're going to have this term. And so from the point of view of the generator, we want to, to fool the discriminator into believing that this outputted from the generator is actually real. So if you look at this term right here, it's going to be one if we manage to fool the discriminator. So we're going to have log of something close to zero. Um, 
And so the question again is, does the discriminator want to maximize or minimize this expression? And the correct answer here is that the generator wants to minimize this. It wants to fool the discriminator. So if we then put these losses together, uh, we're going to have this expression right here where we want to uh, minimize with respect to the generator. We want to maximize with respect to the discriminator, which leads to this uh, minimax game. Uh, and we want to do that for some value function uh, v. And then that takes as input the discriminator and the generator. So all we have here is what we essentially saw in the previous slides, but we want to uh, do that with, for the expected value when x comes from some real data, some real data distribution, and we want to do that for log of d of x. Then we want to add the expected value of z from some, um, where z comes from some random z distribution, and we want to do that for the logarithm of 1 minus d of g of z, just as we saw in the previous slides. Um, so just a note here is that this is taken from the original GAN paper. So if you want to uh, read more about it, it's going to be in the video description. Just uh, in one note here is that in practice, the generator is instead trained to maximize uh, this expression right here, because uh, this, this up here, from the generator's point of view, uh, has pretty weak gradients. And so if we use this, um, this expression instead as a loss function, uh, this new loss function for the generator leads to uh, non-saturating gradients, which makes it a lot easier uh, for training. All right, so in the next video, uh, we build our first simple GAN, and then we're going to expand even further um, and build more and more advanced architectures um, in these upcoming videos. I hope to see you in the next video.